Hi everybody, welcome to the Echo Chamber, where I only say things that you want to hear and you don't have to listen to the rest. Uh, and hopefully the actual echo that's around this room that doesn't have any padding on it. I've been able to minimize in post. If not, sorry, but I'm here, Halifax, Nova Scotia, getting ready to be here all summer long. But that doesn't mean that the crowdfunding cramp tramp, uh, you know, the cramp, that cramp tramp. He comes up in the middle of the night and, and grabs you and then you have cramps the next day. That's it's he's a ghost. He's a translucent figure. Is that is that is that lore that nobody knows that lore? Is that lore only something that I know? I don't know. Hopefully the crowdfunding cramp tramp um, hasn't. I was going to say uh, a different word there and I, I shouldn't. Hasn't latched on to you too hard, giving you too many cramps. No, uh, the crowdfunding countdown is not going to stop. You can see that I've had a, a couple of days of long driving, but that doesn't matter because I love you all, especially these, my newest patrons. I want to give a huge shout out to them. And I understand completely if you, if you want to cancel um, because of just who I am as a person. It doesn't matter. Well, it doesn't, I mean, I... I think it, that probably does matter. Anyway, huge shout out goes to Mohawk, Matt, Hazik, Vicky, and Griffin. Thank you so, so much for jumping on board and supporting the channel. Uh, I, 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 I am really grateful. I'm really grateful. I'm going to throw away my weird silliness and facade aside. I'm really grateful that um, people get value, especially from this series and from the channel. And I just love you all a lot. And whether you're here for a month uh, or a year or the rest of your lives or, you know, writing a contract that forces all of your children and their successors to also become patrons, whichever the case, uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm grateful for however long you want to stick around and, and come in and out of uh, as it is, uh, as you are able. Um, it, it really, it means a lot. And I, I do just want to give you a huge shout out because I, I really appreciate you. And if you haven't joined the Discord, well, come on, join the Discord. We got some fun stuff going on over there. Mostly our deathmatch votes, but we got another other top tens that we've been working on that I will eventually make a video for. But that's not happening this day. What's happening this day is we're taking a look at all the campaigns. So thanks to my patrons. Thanks to you all for hitting the like and subscribe button. And you have to do it now because I said thank you, okay? I said thank you. It would be ungrateful of you not to have done it. That would be a weird double jeopardy situation and I only saw the end of that movie. So let's get right ahead into the week. You all said you liked when I was getting tired at the end of the last one. Well, I haven't slept. <laughs> so this one's gonna, gonna be awful. But we've got Artie. Of course, Artie had to come with us. Yes, you good boy. He's taken to the new house very well. I'm ditching Renee going to dinner with her parents so that I can film this and then um, go to Renee's family's house to celebrate Renee's birthday tomorrow. It's her birthday tomorrow. So everybody wish Renee. A happy birthday in the comments so it would have been her birthday two days ago so say happy belated birthday and then feel shame that you didn't know that you've missed it <laughs> uh, as i will certainly feel if i don't get this video done on time let's look at the campaigns huh i'm sorry to you all but Artie has decided that um it's got to be a bit higher that's probably that'll take out the reverb <clears throat> Board games. They aren't just for gaming. Uh, Artie has chosen the inside of a suitcase over you all. So think about your life choices. <laughs> I certainly will. But honestly, you can blame the friggin' dirty dirt sacks who lived in this place and, and made us spend all night deep cleaning it so that we felt comfortable lying down. It's nice to have your own house. Don't ever leave the house. That's the that's the message. That's the real message. Okay, let's go. <laughs> for the for the actual time now. I'm set up and we're going to see what we're going to see starting with the legendary bundle. No idea what that is. Two exciting new adventure paths set in the world of Kong and Skull Island and Pacific Rim, compatible with everyday heroes. Nope. That's an RPG. Goodbye. Starting with Spiceify. Holly Seam no, I'm gonna no, we're gonna move on. Starting with um <laughs> Zombicide in Japan. Uh if you wanted to get a, a Japanese Zombicide, if you happen to live in Japan, Michael, um, you can get yourself a Japanese copy of Zombicide, except that that they it looks it looks like it's 
it looks like it's all the same all the same words it doesn't it doesn't look like it was changed whatsoever on the on the actual components but come on is extending its reach into japan and um i know all you native japanese speakers that watch my channel would be interested let's move on to the first actual game which is evolution uh, evolution another world create wondrous animals and give them traits to help them survive and thrive in the chaotic magical world this one okay so it's basically just evolution i lied to you it's not this world it is a magical world it's a magical world where nobody can eat your creatures and that was one of the huge things in evolution where you're going to be gaining these different traits you get to evolve your species and i really like that it's been turned into another world i think the idea of getting magical traits and like having a chameleon that can fly and can do all of these things that's sort of the the fun of evolution that I was really hoping for in in the base game. Uh, they said they've eliminated the sort of player elimination that that you can't be eaten while well, you can still be attacked over and over. You can still fall asleep, and so you don't lose your person and their traits, but you probably you put them into a timeout. I'm going to look through the rule books to see the differences. I was supposed to cover the first evolution when it came back, but it, it never got to me through the postal service. So we'll see. Uh, what this one does differently. 30 bucks for retail version, though? That's pretty good. Uh, I will say that my friend, and not neighbor, she does not live next door, let's be very clear, and is not married to my neighbor who designs games. No, my friend Kara was playing the original Evolution uh, with her kids recently and mentioned that it kind of suffers from a runaway leader problem where you just ramp up and up and up and you just keep chomping down and picking on the little people, which makes sense because that's kind of the flow of the game. You're, you're building yourself up, you're chomping down on other people, and I feel like this still will have that. The, the change here is that you need to transmute yourself into another person, something I'm always trying to do, but that likely might feel, feel the same way. Here we go. Here's the how to play section. Rulebook better be down here afterwards. It's still halfway down the page. But this is the core of the game. You can create a new creature. You basically play a card from your hand, or you can add a trait to one of your creatures, and the traits let you do things uh, and then you're stealing these resources from somewhere else. And once you get to four energy, you get to transmute yourself. Or you can attack and then really, you know, steal energy from somebody else. So it's going to be all about that attack. It's kind of in that sort of take take that realm. Uh, but I, I think, where's the friggin'? Why is the rulebook not right after your how to play? Like, get it together. Seriously, people. I have no time. I have no patience. But I do like that thumbnail. Good job, Board Game Coffee. <laughs> Rulebook three quarters down the page. Ridiculous. Oh, that's kind of cool, though. You can put yourself to sleep in order to kind of protect yourself, which I like. That's a neat That's a neat idea. And then it can't be targeted, so then it couldn't lose its stuff. But yeah, it, it bases itself off the evolution, so not like too much has changed. But I mean, if you're interested in evolution, and it's it's gotten a decent number of reviews, the retail version is 30 bucks. Special edition gets is 45 bucks which is the one that you should clearly back at this point 45 bucks 60 canadian with shipping 12 bucks to the us 13 to canada that's pretty good and then a little cheaper for a times two all right definitely not an unreasonable purchase and i feel like uh, this is the sort of evolution that i would want to play because i love magic so if you're interested in that, check that out. It finishes Wednesday, June 7th at 1 p.m. And now the times will be in Atlantic time. Usually they've been Eastern time, so one hour ahead. So just keep that in mind because that's what my computer is going to tell me. Moving along to something you may never have heard of before because it's only raised a paltry 2.7 million euros. Uh, this is Aeon's Trespass Odyssey, second printing plus all new content. That's the full title of the game. Uh, I, I thought it was kind of a, a weird title. I, I thought I think the first one was just called Aeon Trespass Odyssey. This one is officially called Aeon Trespass Odyssey, second printing plus all new content, as evidenced by, you know, the, the use of uh, punctuation here. Definitely, that is what is going to be on your box. So keep that in mind. If you are backing, that's what's going to say. Going in the great tradition of Kingdom Death colon Monster or any adventure game colon another exciting word, we have Aeon Trespass Odyssey. Wait, I'm not allowed to say that it's like Kingdom Death, right? Isn't that, isn't that something that they want? They don't want it to be compared to other fantasy games? Is that something that they explicitly like to ask for as well as explicitly asking? 
that all their coverage is positive. That's something that they like to just ask for, isn't it? And see, that's not libel because, you know, that's actually true. Let's see what they are saying in this seven minute long video. I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> no. No, um, I've already taken a look at this. If you if you want a uh, look, you can check out my five reasons you shouldn't back. I did one on Ant Trespass Odyssey. I think it looks cool. I think it does look cool. And I think um, the rule book that they have here, I really like. If you're interested in this game and you can't read the first 12 pages of this of this rule book, well, then you, you shouldn't be playing it and you shouldn't be interested in it because that kind of gives you that's the summary section of the rule book. It's on the page somewhere. I love this. This is this is my favorite one that they definitely didn't steal from Attack on Titan. How many of these Titans are stolen from Attack on Titan? I don't know, but this one is. It's for sure. Look at that friggin' smile. Love it. As I get to the rule book, I'll I'll talk a little bit more about it. I, I've talked a lot about it in the five reasons you shouldn't back. So I don't want to rehash that, but just to kind of give uh, a, a quick breakdown, there's this sort of seventh continent style exploration phase where you move around and you play these cards on your map and you connect those map. And then you're going to have story phases where you delve into this big old storybook uh, and you read through a bunch of text passages. And then you're going to get to the encounter, sort of the boss battling phase. And that's that's sort of the big majority where you jump into your flesh suit titans or you mind control them or you or you just whisper in their ear please go help save humanity and they say okay and they run towards the enemy and immediately get impaled by their 12 fists uh whichever way that they end up jumping in it's all canon and stop showing me these where is the it's the longest campaign ever. Oh, this is because they've, it's a longer campaign page because they've been revealing these different elements to it. Another element to this game is that you can, you can get Aeon's Trespass Odyssey for like 300 euros, which some people will tell you is the tried and true way and the thing you should do. Or you could, for only 118 euros, a, a bargain at this point, uh, you can get uh, phase one of this new expansion that's gonna probably play pretty similarly to the other one but you don't have the guarantees on story that I, that other people seem to really enjoy i've heard from a lot of people uh, in the five reasons comments saying that it's one of the best stories ever and they're like no this one is the best story ever this is better than any other book i've ever read and i'm never reading books again in fact i'm gonna burn them all uh i think i think that was something along those lines w was the uh were the comments i was getting but yeah so there's this 12 sins of heracles where you can get the spring section and then there's gonna be a summer and a winter and an autumn also for that $118 price point that they want you to purchase at the same time as purchasing uh, apparently 700 hours of content bringing you to your life of content. This is your next life. If this interests you, that's great. Honestly, I've heard really good things about it. The few people in the Discord have been huge champions of Aeon Trespass Odyssey. They've been loving it so much. Uh, they've they've played enough of it. They've played like forty to fifty hours through a couple cycles to to have a pretty good opinion. And I mean, they've they've kept on playing it, so that's that's something for sure. Jeez, uh, th this campaign page is too long. I'm sorry, but then again, if you can't scroll and read through all of this, you're not going to scroll and read through the game. Let's be real. Where I just want to show you some friggin' examples. Now I'm at the shipping. I went too far. This is why GameFound is superior to Kickstarter. You heard it here first because they, there could be a tab that gets me where I need to go. Probably have it still downloaded on this computer. Let's be real. How does it play? Yeah. No, not after the how does it play. Cool. Uh, yeah, why would we want a rule book there? Probably, probably wouldn't. We probably wouldn't. Yep. <laughs> still had it in my downloads. Great. <laughs> Could not find it on the campaign page, but am finding it here in all of its 83 pages of glory. I think I, I think it does a really good job of of giving you the ideas of what it offers and what it what is fun. And if you get through these first 12 pages right here with the campaign basics and uh, that walks you through what you're going to be basically doing, you, you have all these Argos and you get to level them up. And if the Titans that they control die then that's fine. They can keep on go arguing and, uh, and just sink their flesh into another meat sack, as the old saying goes. But yeah, if you like those big, large, epic campaigns, that's who this appeals to, right? Which, which is an interesting thing. Um, 
the, those big, long, epic, big boss battlers, right? Kingdom Death Monster and Trespass Odyssey. Those two have been pretty directly linked by quite a few people and by uh, in quite a few comments. Other other ones have been like Madara, just from like the scale and size and amount of money you have to invest in it. And I think the comparison of of it being very seven continent like as the voyage phase is really apt and also helps for me uh, makes me stay away right because i never was a fan of seven continent really didn't enjoy my time with that game although having a little element to it might be fine but it really ended up being file folder the library book game and that's not a game that i like to play that being said, the the concept of the battles here, uh, I, I think, also looks really fun. And I do love the potential for the branching storylines and that you're existing in this one environment because that's what you've explored and you're you're figuring out who's there and then you move on to another environment and kind of are navigating in that open world style game as well. I think it's pretty cool. Anyway, I'm not going to talk too much more about this because, I mean, I talked about it for a long time, both what I was excited about and what I wasn't in the five reasons you shouldn't back. And as always in that one, there's a lot of great comments of uh, balance perspective. I just think it's ludicrous, right? What What is the shipping on this? We were there and then I ran away from it, probably because I was scared. Game found, why, why aren't you on game found <laughs> on trespass? Just make it, give me some tabs. Honestly, I wouldn't even be surprised at this point in the campaign page if it was just all lorem ipsum, blah, just fake words because they know nobody's ever gonna scroll down to it. There we go. The Heracles, the one shipment to the U.S., 33 to 39, or Odysseus. The Odysseus Pledge is the second printing of Aeon's Trespass Odyssey, also known as Aeon Trespass Odyssey, second printing plus all new content. That's 43 to 48 bucks. And then the mortal shipment where you get everything. Honestly, a good deal. <laughs> a good deal. 76 to 87 dollars in shipping, right? When you're paying 851 dollars Canadian, What's another hundred dollars? So really, this is like six hundred and something, almost probably a thousand dollars Canadian. Um, yeah, I think this looks fine, but there's no way I would ever be interested in playing it ever because it takes too much time, and I'm not really interested in them. And unless you're actively excited about something like this, and like really excited, not I, I think you need for this game. I I said I was going to move on, but I, we keep going. My my money-saving tendencies just can't stop. Uh, I think if, with this game, you need to be, like, over the moon excited. You really have to think that this will be your number one game to warrant spending all this friggin' money on it. And all this time. Like, your time is so valuable. You could be playing so many other games and experiencing all of your shelf of shame and all of your Kickstarter backlog that you got from the last two years uh, instead of trying to get this game to the table enough to to get your money's worth out of it. So there you go. That finishes Wednesday, June 7th. If you're here wondering what it's all about, you don't have enough time to look into it, and you haven't cared enough to look into it, meaning you shouldn't get it. If you haven't read the rule book by now, what are you doing? You're going to spend $1,000 on a game you haven't read the rule book of? No, don't do that. Come on. Moving along, let's go to Thunder Rolls, the Garage Expansion. Coincidentally, that was my nickname, the hurtful nickname um, at that pool party in high school that people gave me. They said, oh, here comes Thunder Rolls. I said, stop calling me that. They're like, oh, yeah, the original Thunder Rolls was last year. And this guy's the, the Garbage Expansion, not the Garage, I guess. More mayhem, cars, and fun for the Thunder Rolls game by Richard Lanius. I love that. Honestly, love that. Shout the designers out more in the tagline. I think that's a smart play. Honestly, I'm inherently against this game because I prefer Thunder Road or Death Road. Oh, I think it was Death Road All-Stars. That's where Maggie's from. I do remember this game, though. Oh, I just I just missed it. Uh, I do remember this game, though. You're going to lay out your cards. This was on Kickstarter a while back, probably in one of the first crowdfunding countdowns. I have to check. But you're going to lay out some cards, and then you're going to roll some dice, and you're going to have some re-rolls, I think. And then you're assigning them to, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, and you assign them, and that gives the efficacy of those actions as you race around the track. I like what it's adding. It's adding customized options, which is always fun. As a team game, eh, doesn't do anything for me, but that's because I've never learned to be on a team, because I was always picked never. Uh... <laughs> For, the, for those of you keeping track, Artie is still in the suitcase, and it's adorable. 
Anyway, yeah, here's the how to play section. You're going to roll the dice, you're going to assign them, you're going to get cards that you can then use to maneuver your program and use to maneuver your car on the track to win. Shipping projected, 16 bucks to US, probably for full pledge. Canada's 24. No real e rule book. I don't see one for this new expansion, though, which I don't know why that, that would be a thing. Even Rallyman Cars had a rule book. That's been a while since we mentioned them. Yeah, this is really disappointing. It's got like a general outline of what you can do, but like I want to see how they interact. I, I want to see, I want to read this reference card. There's no excuse at this point for them not to have something that I can look at. Unless I'm missing it, I am tired, so I'll, I'll give everyone this week the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, this is very disappointing that they don't have the rule book. Um, why would you ever purchase an expansion without knowing how it really can help increase your experience of the original game? Yeah, not not impressed with this. Uh, see, no reason to get it, because it gives you no reason to get it. But I guess if you're a big Thunder Rolls fan, well, that's that's you who's been pledging. Um, anyway, if you're interested in that, that finishes Wednesday, June 7th at 6.30 p.m. Moving along to Animal Kingdom trading card game. You know me, I hate trading card games, uh, but we're going to take a quick look, see if there's anything, because it says that it's an innovative city building trading card game for two to four players. I hope this echo isn't too loud for you, buddy, but I got to talk to the people. So let's check it out. I can't be closer to the mic than this, and I'm sticking with it. All right. Seems kind of cute. It does. Um, I hate that it's a trading card game. Why can't you just be a normal game with a bajillion expansion? Like a regular game who's pretending that they're not going to make you spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on it, huh? Basically, oh yeah, I'll go back to this this little... You're going to have your, your workers and your town. You're going to put buildings out there. And then you're going to have adventurers who are going to go on quests. Workers can be used for abilities or they can be tapped for renown. And instead of like a normal two-player head-to-head card game, you're not killing each other that much. You're building renown and you're achieving these different quests that are out there. You also have a unique assistant mayor. And they'll give you an ability, right? Once per turn, once per game, those sorts of things. What I do like about this, too, is that any quest that's flipped up, everybody has their own little quest deck, uh, but any quest that's flipped up can be completed by anybody else, which I think is cool. But let's look at the price. 40 bucks for this starter tier. What's in it? You know what? I like that they've got a print and play. Love that it's print and play. Love that it's on Tabletop Simulator. But just hate the idea of rare cards. Like, it's just so stupid to me and it just makes people want to buy things over and over to try to get the thing that they want when in any other game you could just buy the thing that you want i do like that i think that this base pledge could be enough to have fun with so i think they have to be given credit for that but it's still 40 pounds 68 dollars canadian only 22 people have backed for it 10 bucks shipping to the us 20 to canada so it's like 80 to 90 dollars for a, a simple card game like it looks good but it doesn't look that good uh but if you're interested check it out that finishes thursday june 8 at 11 59 a.m moving along to apex legends the board game uh apex legends the board game highly strategic team versus team miniatures board game for one to six players yeah maybe you can just hear Artie purring into the microphone uh includes solo and co-op I'm excited. Um, I've got a couple friends, uh, Dave, who you'll probably see on the channel later this week, because I think I'll edit that video and put it out, maybe, if the amount of work I have doesn't make me explode like a dying star. But he loves Apex Legends, the, vi the video game, and was looking at this. So definitely going to check this out. Uh, I'm excited that it's raised so much money. Yeah. Artie doesn't like Apex Legends, though, to be clear. Artie, that's what Artie thinks of Apex Legends. Let's be real. <laughs> That's what he wants you all to see while we uh, while we check it out. I mean, it, it does look really cool. It does. It does. Oh, I guess it does. I mean, even Artie's coming around to it. Solo and co-op expansion by David Turksey. That's pretty huge for me as a fan. Honestly, I don't want to say it. It's a little... I mean, the campaign and their unlocks are a little remnant of Six Siege. <laughs> Run! <laughs> uh, I think this looks really neat, though. Oh, and you get a free expansion. But not at the display pledge, where all you do is get a poster. No, I mean, nine people have wanted that. So, sure, those nine people, I'm sure, are very happy. Or they'll be very confused why they don't get a game. And you get this free character if you do get the core pledge, which is great. I was going to be mad, but I was misreading something. 
because I was a bit distracted. I mean, really, for the extra five euros, you might as well get the full team expansion. This is one of those things where it's like, hey, you have favorite characters, don't you? Arty mode deactivate. Uh, better vocal sound reactivate. Okay, let's go. This is one of those where it's like, yeah, we know you paid for the extra characters in the video game, so we bet you're going to do it in the board game too. <laughs> and also, that makes sense because you're going to have a mini for everything. Let's get to the rule book. There's like literally zero reason not to spend 85 euros to get the gamer pledge if you're spending 80 on the core pledge. Like you get, you get, don't you get more? This is confusing. This is bad marketing. They do have a very handy chart, though, and this honestly seems like a, a necessary chart. It's nice how they don't... Uh, no, I'm not going to beat that dead horse. <laughs> I've already done that quite a lot this episode. I just think here is the most important thing. I don't know what a legend diorama is, but I think the miniatures and getting two extra ones for five bucks and the additional stats, etc. Oh, it's nice. They have this to compare all pledges. Can it work as a board game? I don't know. Paula Deming in the trailer certainly tells you it can. Pretty sure it was her voice. It's already got great character design and great art because Apex Legends is fun. I mean, I, I would generally play Fortnite over Apex Legends, but that's just because I'm a little baby and Fortnite doesn't have building anymore. Okay, here we go. Here's the breakdown. During their activation, each legend may perform a basic action to move, interact, use, and attack. In addition, players may use their legend set of unique abilities. That makes sense as well as a deck of legend-specific action cards. You can play with different weapons. Honestly, this seems kind of fun. And might seem like a reasonable price, too, for what you're getting. Comes with a tutorial booklet. Cool. Or you can play a deathmatch. You can play Battle Royale. You can play teams. What's interesting is they're hitting up a lot of, like, wargaming channels with their publicity and their marketing i mean they obviously hit the dice tower yes read the core rules give it to me that should tell you also a little bit about the flow of the game i i don't know i think it uh, i guess it's gonna be a skirmish game right and most war games are skirmish games but i think this could have a different market or maybe, maybe it's just because i like the ip i'm definitely drawn to it because i like the ip but i'm really interested in this and even more interested if i can convince dave to get it Dave, you don't buy many Kickstarters. You should do it. <laughs> no, I'll let, me, let me read the rule book and then I'll tell you that after. Uh, yeah, another, another element that I'm really interested in seeing, one, if the buildings will remain built in the box. That's important. Great wall. And two, I like that there is going to be this modularity of setup that you have these different things all around. Does this make me just want to play Apex, though, instead of the board game, like the video game? I see. These are probably the dioramas. Diorama card base holder. So you get the dioramas in the core game, these cool things, but you get more minis, potentially more choices in the gamer the gamer thing. I think I'd still go for the gamer over cosmetic, but this is kind of like a nice touch. I also do like that you're going to be respawning, right? There's no player elimination in this. That also is exciting to me. Cool. Love this. Initiative first before their action. The other squad gets to be the first to draft a legend. Yeah, uh-oh. I'm feeling it. <laughs> I, but I'm feeling it because I know the customization. I'm feeling that pull of customization. I'm feeling the pull of all the different characters. And then I'm feeling just I liked I liked that idea as a, as a first player. I like that it doesn't constantly shift. It seems very clean. Let's keep going. We're only on page eight. Get to the real meat of it. Uh, the basic breakdown of the line of sight is that there's going to be sort of contiguous things that affect you if you're the area of effect, probably like explosions, whatever. And then there's line of sight where if I'm punching you, I can't punch you if you're, you know, two floors above me. Seems like one floor you can jump up and down, right? But you have to get to level one to get to level two. I also think that's cool. I guess this could be a team game. It does feel like a, like a two-player game to me. Because it says you activate your legend, and then you activate your legend, and you activate your legend. And so, like, if you're just... It's going to be one team versus another team every time. And, well, unless there's the Battle Royale mode, which I haven't gotten to, but it feels like it's built for this team versus team mode where you're activating one, activating the other, and trying to position and tactically position yourself around this. I, I think this looks fun. It, it's going to be a lot of, like, little minutia rules with, like, line of sight and the different abilities, but I just like... How you get your loadout at the beginning that seems fun you're gonna get a random loadout with loot and weapons and then you're gonna to have to deal with those weapons as you proceed throughout the game yeah i think if you're a fan of the, the video game well you may not get this to the table this may be more of sort of a one-off thing 
because you you probably would just play the video game more but i like these i like that there's a little bit of card play i mean the card play is pretty simple uh it, it just there are effects that happen at certain times but but the fact that you have them and that you can use your abilities and feel like character is a good pitch yeah it really reminds me a lot of six siege which i know people are uh a bit traumatized about but i thought six siege looked good i think this looks good I, mean, I thought six siege looked a bit better but you know nobody's ever gonna get to play that i can see why people would easily want to add those extra squads to what's the shipping yikes yeah oh no dang it was so good i mean even still that's why you go by the full amount right the fact that you can get a core pledge or the gamer pledge i think you'd want to go for the gamer pledge personally uh so let's let's go with that you can get it for 25 so 110 euros or 115 euros so like 150 canadian that's around what you're what you're gonna pay or what i would expect to pay for a big box game and I think this does qualify as a big box game. So honestly, I think it hit, hits its mark. I think it looks like it'll actually be decent and not an IP cash grab. Kind of well thought out. So if you're interested in that, yeah, check it out. It finishes Thursday, June 8th at 12 p.m. Moving along to the Age of Scene Deluxe Expansion Volume 4 and Acrylic Track Tiles. Uh, this is Volume 4, I guess, of Age of Steam, which has had uh, expansions and a new deluxe version in the past. Let's see what Evil Griffin has made. Age of Steam Deluxe Expansion Volumes 1, 2, and 3. Well, wouldn't you know it, they're moving on with number 4. You can get Age of Steam, uh, which I hadn't looked into until this, this one, the past one, right? I thought it looked kind of cool. The expansions, then, are normally just extra maps. Seven new expansion maps. Look at that. Two new expansion maps with uh, two-player solo, because they're based on player count. And then you can, you can play it all. This is surprising to me that this is this is doing so well because it feels like Age of Steam just had the reprint. But these are all the different maps that you can get if you somehow have worn out your copy of Age of Steam and there's no more way to play with it. Well, here you go. And these are just the additional like small little changes to the maps and the, the differences that they add in. If you've never played Age of Steam before, it's a big old train game where it's like accessible... 18xx is kind of how I describe it. You're going to be laying down these train tiles, connecting things together, and then also building upon uh, and, and moving the stocks on and up of different train companies. It's a bit more complicated than that, but not as complicated as any other 18xx game. I've heard it's good and it looks pretty cool, but it's also not something that I'm currently willing to spend the amount of money that they want for the deluxe copy, right? I mean, Eagle Griffin, they make great games. They make really good production quality of those games. Artie wants food. Oh, no, I said the word. You're a good boy. So he's being annoying and really extending the duration of this video when I, I, I want to get it done quickly. But he's cute, so that's okay. The fact that you can get the acrylic tile set, though, might be of interest to big Age of Steam fans. I can see how that would be a fun thing to add. And it's only nine bucks to get to the US, so. There you go. Uh, if you're interested in that, that finishes over on GameFound on the 9th of June at 12 p.m. The 9th of June being, of course, Friday. Let's move along to McBaron, Bravery in the Sky, an action-packed solo print-and-play war game. Look at that, print-and-play. I like, I like print-and-play, but this is a print-and-play war game, which I haven't seen before. Let's check it out. You know what? I think this actually might be the only or the first example of measurement movement that I'm interested in because, and somebody mentioned this too when I was talking about it in terms of mechanics, uh, I, I always think the concept of measurement movement is really cool. And here, the whole purpose is sort of to guess your flight distance by eye. So you've got to measure it out. And so you're planning all these different maps and, and this one requires you to have a bunch of different maps or else it would get stale very soon. But it's also, you know, only a three pound print and play, sorry, three euro print and play. $5 Canadian. Only two different map battlegrounds, each map in two versions. Eh. I mean, it does say endless replayability. I'm, I'm sure I believe them. But this idea of flying to a place blindly, getting a random mission, rolling the dice, getting a random mission, and then having to go to that spot and then measuring it and estimating your measurements every time as a gold medalist in estimation math, this is obviously very interesting to me. Pretty cool. I mean, if you like print and plays, we're, there's quite a few left. Uh, on the week, that's mostly what's left. But check this one out. This actually feels 
pretty de pretty decent for uh, print and play. So that finishes Friday, June 9th at 6.59 p.m. Moving along to Slackjack, a pirate game of bluffing and deception, which of course contains my two favorite words, and and of. Uh, <laughs> that, that joke made me laugh, like, off camera for like a long time. I will admit, <laughs> I thought I was so stupidly funny last time, and please tell me that I wasn't, so I don't get a big head. This is bringing me in, though, just nine bucks. Nine bucks on Kickstarter is absurd and unheard of, and I hope you're good, Slackjack, because I'm interested. Definitely intrigued by this. I feel I've heard everything I need to know. You get two cards, and you get to keep one of them, and then you are wanting to be picked by the captain to go on the mission, you want to hit 21, and you're saying, listen, I definitely am not the slackjack who's going to steal all of your money, I swear, pick me to go on the mission. And then the captain has to choose who goes on the mission. This seems like a very interesting concept, um, and nine bucks for a quick little game feels like any other sort of Kickstarter would charge you 15 or 20 for this. I mean, here's 19, the $19 pledge. And here's a $29 pledge where you get metal coins. <laughs> Here you get little fake coins. Here you get no coins when you, you want to get coins, but you just, you know, keep track of it in your head. Metal coins at 29 also feels like a really ridiculous bargain. Often metal coins will cost you like a dollar a coin. And that's only 20, 28 bucks, 29 bucks. Wow, that's pretty good. If you like metal coins, check that out for sure. 10 bucks for metal coins add on. There you go. And you can also get a poker deck. Oh, yes, thank you for the rule book, even though it is four-fifths down the page. Oh, okay, cool. This was great. This is why you read the rule book, because I was like, oh, I have all of these potential downfalls, and this addresses one of them, right? Uh, how, what happens if everybody just has <laughs> tens, right? You can pick one or two crew members to go on your team, so you can draw one, and you can draw a second one, but you can stop. So all you need to do is trust one person. That's it. The other thing that I was concerned of is what if everybody is the slackjack, but chances are, judging by this component breakdown, where it says five special cards, uh, heart, jack, queen, king, feels like the slackjacks aren't going to be so plentiful that everybody is one of them. I like that there's different uh, abilities, but it doesn't address the potential problem of not getting picked if you have four gold, right? If you, have, if you have four gold and you need five gold to win, you say, hey, captain, I'm going to give you the card that you need to win. And the captain's at two gold. They'll just say, no, you won't. <laughs> and so I guess you got to wait until it's your turn. I, I can see a potential like downside there. And I don't really see the benefit or, or, or see how this addresses that. So that's my main hesitation is that end game. I think the I think the actual game flow of it is going to be pretty fun, but I think the end game itself is potentially not going to be that. Or it's just an inevitability, right? Because whoever doesn't get picked goes on the loser's team and you just have to hope that they don't have it, but at one point they might have enough. Maybe maybe that the loser's team might save that, but then again it feels like a forced in it inevitability right that being said i mean this is nine bucks it's nine bucks for this potential game and shipping is six bucks so 15 total where other things would charge you 15 and then another 10 like this is this is the deal this is a great deal for what looks to be a, a pretty decent take on like blackjack with some little fun bluffing elements to it uh if that's interesting to you feel free to check it out that finishes uh saturday june 10th at 12 a.m yeah i'm torn I'm torn. I think it looks fun. And it, it, honestly, it's cheap enough to not worry too much, but still, I'm worried about that end game sort of thing. Uh, moving along to, <laughs> I'm sorry, it, it's not going to fun, but I just had to include it in here <laughs> because <laughs> this is Poople, a party card game that lets people turn the shit in their lives into fun. <laughs> Oh, this is, well, poop is a very, very funny word. I gotta tell you, poop is, is a very funny word. And I'm talking about it, just making it, make it funny. And then here, there's some funny cards you can play. <laughs> Although this is, this is, a, this is objectively better than anything Cards Against Humanity has ever made. So there's that. There you go, poople. Use that as a quote. Um, let's move on to Warlord, Orc Duel. 
Battle head-to-head -head in this tableau building card game as you vie for the loyalty of three orc factions. I'm intrigued by this little Seven Wonders duel thing. Uh, let's check it out. I'm putting that up there because uh, that's a little Seven Wonders duel <laughs> win condition as well. The game is fully manufactured, ready to ship. That's good. Print and play for $1. Love that. I think that's so important. And $9. Look at that. I mean, there's, there's 67 left, so everybody should be able to get it. Or pick up a Gen Con. Look at that. Nine bucks and no shipping. Nine dollars is the price point, people, for these little card games. Great job to both Slackjack and Warlord Orc Duel. Warlord Orc Duel. You know, that's how it sounds like. Poor Blor Mork Boar. Also known as Paul Blart 7. Paul Blart Warlord. Yeah, so it's very simple. It's very it's seven wonders, but with less going on. You can play a card from your hand, or you can take a card. You can this should go first. You can take a card, you can put it into your hand, put it into your tableau, or put it into your opponent's tableau. If you're playing cards from your hand, you get to activate their ability, and then they get their strength or their negative strength. So you're drafting and hate drafting, etc. But you have to be careful because if you get all six types, you win. I mean, honestly, seven wonders duel, people like it a lot. This feels very much like that to me, a little bit simpler. Uh, if you're interested, what's the shipping? There's a campaign mode too? Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, when you play multiple rounds, you can say, okay, these people aren't worth any points anymore. So then they're just worth zero, and that's kind of like an alternate way of how you can play. Cool, I like that. Interesting twists. Better than I expected. I thought it was going to be a lot uh, worse than this. Where's the shipping? Shipping to the US, eight bucks. Shipping to Canada, 10 bucks. I mean, it's no slack checks. No, didn't even have that. But but that's also fairly reasonable, especially when it's at that $9 price point. Yeah, I think this is also a, another real potential. So if that interests you, check that out. It finishes Saturday, June 10th at 8.20 a.m. Moving along to another print and play, Uncharted Stars, a print and play roll and write game for one to 100 players. So if you have 101 people at your party, honestly, tell them to get lost. You're playing a solo game now, or you play a solo game, and then they play this game without you. Yeah, that's more likely. Uh, designed by Scott Alms and illustrated by Tristram Rawson. It's got all the good roll and write buzzwords. Five pounds, though. Nine Canadian. That's, uh, that's pricey for those print and plays. But, I mean, by sort of a notable designer, so... Oh, and full color rules. Well, then, I take it back. Worth every penny. Oh, this says one to an infinite number of players. Probably should have put that in the tagline, huh? The winner is the player who has successfully explored the galaxy and hired the best crew. This is cool. Yeah, you're going to explore all the spaces in the galaxy or the locations, and you're going to cross them out, and then you're going to get the bonuses that'll chain into other things, like true roll and write fashion. Do you have the rule book? A lot of roll and writes don't. Yeah, okay, so no rule book because usually that's just giving away the whole game and they never do that. So you have to take it based off of this description. But where's like, where's the flow of it? This is really disappointing to me. This is really disappointing to me. So there's no rule book, but there's no even like game flow, right? There's this game overview that tells you some of the things that are out there, but it doesn't actually tell you even what's going to happen when you roll your dice. Where on the page does it tell you that? Literally, where on the page does it tell you what happens when you roll your two dice and assumingly assign them to different sections of the board, right? But, like, why, why is that not a thing? Why should I ever do this? I mean, when I can get a different print and play for three bucks, right? Nothing really that much in the updates as well. Like, I understand there's some full color rules, but I just would love to see them. I must be missing something here without clicking on the reviews that'll tell me how to play. Like, I want the game to tell me how to play, you know? That's disappointing to me. That makes for a disappointing Kickstarter, honestly. Like, I can't, I don't get a full sense, because even in this, it just tells you the same things. So I'm like, oh yeah, I'm interested in recruiting the die, but it gives me an extra space action. I don't know what a space action is, right? Well, I guess it, I'm, I'm assuming it's, it's a movement action. And then you upgrade your thrusters to move more on that grid. Like, I can, I can intuit what I think the game is, but I don't think that's my job in, uh, it, as, as a consumer, I mean, it's my job as like a YouTuber, uh, board game reviewer, but it's not my job as a consumer. And so I just think this is a very poorly structured campaign page, but, uh, Hey, it's gotten 1600 people to click yes and give five pounds. So what the hell do I know? 1674. Yeah. There's only seven people <laughs> who haven't clicked that, who've clicked the $1 support. They're holding out. 
we're waiting to see if they'll donate the extra four pounds. Uh, but yeah, for me, I think this likely could be good if if they told me what it was all about. But they don't, so not interested. Anyway, if you're interested in that, it finishes Sunday, June 11th, 1159 a.m. Moving along to something I'm actually very excited about. That's basically my smile as well, um, is El Burro, which is the new La Granja game, La Granja. I know it's La Granja, okay? I know it's La Granja Estranja, right? Uh, El Burro is a new standalone game where you're developing your farm, but you have to move your goods to the port of Palma. Yeah, yeah, I said that right. The game uses multi-purpose cards and dice drafting like La Granja. I, I've never gotten more hate in the comments for a mispronunciation than when I said La Granja. They came for me, and rightly so. Now I know it is La Granja. In a game round, you'll play cards, draft dice one at a time to conduct actions, deliver your goods to your own market stands or to local markets, and bring them all the way to the Port of Palma. Then you score prestige for deliveries, and then four rounds, you get special cards. Or points for the special cards, I should say. Where to rule book? There to rules. Works are in progress. El burro. That's fine. We get it. Wait a minute. The, the manor in La Gran Tra. Spanish for the farm pronounced La Gran Tra. It's not La Gran, huh? La Gran Tra. La Gran Tra. According to this rule book, it's La Gran Tra. I didn't even think this, this bit would fall into my lap. Welcome to El Burro, a La Gran Tra game. Hey, that's what they say. That's what they told me. I know it's the C. It's probably different. Nope, that's what they told me. For this friggin' gringo, you should probably just put an H, A, but, you know, what can you do? What's great and exciting about this game is that each card has four different purposes. So if you like multi-use cards, that's what you want. You can see this symbol of this uh, the board right here. H, 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 H. Howard Hamlin, Hamlin, Hamlin. Uh, you can see the top of the card, the sides of the cards, and sort of the bulk of the card, which was like over here. You can see they have all these different things. So you're going to be putting them under your board and developing your farm uh, as you move throughout the game. I also like that when you're playing your workers into the available spots and more spots as you develop your board, uh, you have to pay them at the end of the round. And if you don't have enough to pay them, it's basically food. It's a food feeding mechanic. They go on strike and they just stay there and they block that action space as well. So you really, it is really punishing when you don't plan in advance. But yeah, there's kind of going to be four phases. Uh, if you look here in the game found page, you're going to play new cards and develop your board. You're going to choose your revenue actions this is basically like the dice drafting aspect of it and it depends upon the types of revenue that you can generate from your board revenue actions show sort of where you can place things and then you're going to send your people there and then you can move your two donkeys there's sort of a, a, a map a little road that you can move your donkeys you move your donkeys they all kind of go in the same direction but you can trigger different events depending upon where you when you move them both donkeys can only kind of move in the same direction and you can only move one donkey at a time, which is key. So it's deciding where you want to place your donkeys and getting ready for the next round. And then finally, you get points based upon all the stuff that you did. Seems chunky. Seems nice. I think uh, La Grand Tra is one that I was probably more interested in. You get an English version for 79 euros, $86 US, like 100 bucks Canadian. And the fact that La Grand Tra just had, sorry, La Grand Tra had such a big thing um and big deluxe edition that just happened and you would still get it for cheaper than this and and has that sort of same gameplay style and, and perhaps a little bit deeper gameplay just from my remembering of it and reading this i mean it's pretty it's pretty deep honestly like i i didn't slam through the whole thing of this rule book i i skimmed it i'll be honest because i gotta get out the door uh <laughs> You can see the ones that haven't loaded. These ones actually haven't loaded. I don't know. For the price of another euro, you'll have to make that decision. If also, oh God, like look at this shipping to the U.S. to Canada. If you're in Europe, if you're in Germany, maybe, maybe. But it still is expensive for a similar style euro game. It's a tough sell, even with the best gangster's name in the West, El Burro. And that's probably why it hasn't really blown up, right? But it, it does look cool because I like these sorts of like dry style chaining things together games. So yeah, sure. Check it out. That finishes 2023-06-11. I don't know why I said it like that. Clearly, I'm, I'm getting to that point. That's the 11th of June 
at 1 p.m., 11th the Sunday. Now, moving along to our last campaign, it's another roll and write. I told you more were coming. This is hard level from the computer screen to roll and write game experience, print and play board game. How much for the print and play board game? Three euro, the way it should be. Let's check it out very quickly and wrap this thing up. Cool, it claims you're gonna jump through collecting coins, go into the big bad. Let's see uh, anything about it. Oh, this is cool though. You're unlocking different uh, classes. That's fun. I do think what's kind of fun you can see here is that there's like a little piece that you print out and you're just jumping around and moving your 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 people all around. Uh, but it's just a solo game of going through this level, rolling dice to make the checks to see if you win the day. And you have different classes as well. Yeah, seems okay. Uh, it just doesn't seem like anything that I would play. I would probably just play a hard level on a Game Boy Advance like this is replicating, but kind of neat. If that seems exciting to you, I, I think that's cool. And that if that is three euros, five Canadian, and finishes Monday, June 12th at 4.16 p.m., that's it. Wait, we got to check out what's what's finishing on Backer Kit, right? What about th these books or these B pins or, or this RPG stuff or this uh, graphic, probably graphic novel? No, is it a game? Who knows? Um, what about this deck of cards where you can summon a demon? Wow, now we've covered it. Thanks, Backer Kit. Um, that's it. That's it for the week. You can see the dust in this place is not good for me. Uh, no, no, I'm just crying. I'm crying because that's it, and I'm sad to leave you all. I am. Uh, but every week, there's a pick for me and a pick for you. The pick for me being the thing that I'm the most interested in, and the pick for you being something that I think you should get. And um, pick for me is is pretty pretty solidly locked in there. I think I don't know if there's a pick for you. Pick for you might just be value. Nah, no, I know what the pick for you is going to be, and uh, I'm ready to talk about it. Pick for me is Apex Legends board game. One rule set to rule them all, Paula Deming. Um, this game looks like really true to the board game. I think it would be fun to play. I think I would want to play it with somebody who knew all the minutia and the rules and could just tell me when I screwed up, right? I think uh, there's going to be a lot-ish to keep track of in terms of like line of sight and like, okay, how does this grenade work? How does this gun work? But I think if you get over that hurdle, uh, I think this is going to be a faithful representation of the board game. And Dave can teach it to me and then I'll tell you, wait, then it should be the pick for you, the pick for you. Yeah, pick for Dave. <laughs> I, I think this does look cool. I think, yeah, a lot of people are going for this because they're insane collectors. Let's see how many people. 302, that's actually not that bad. Solo all in, 1392. Why is it solo all in versus gameplay all in? Oh yeah, solo all in so that you can get the solo mode. That's why, the solo and the co-op expansion, which feels like it should be already built in there, but you know, what can you do? Um, yeah, but I, I actually think this looks slickly developed and I think it looks well thought out and not necessarily a cash grab. And I think it looks, uh, the mini sculpts look neat. Obviously, they're going to be different than that because that's just like render, but they'll look less cool, but they'll still look cool. That That's my absolute uh, pick for me. Pick for you this week is Skull. <laughs> Skull is not a Kickstarter game. Skull's on my shelf. Skull is pretty fun. Uh, I got this this a little bit ago. It's 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 a fun bluffing game, and uh, I had a lot of laughs with my copy that I got at Binge Bins. But for more on that, well, I have to tune into that. Uh, what games I brought with me to Halifax, which is coming out. Don't look on the shelf. Don't don't look at them. Um, <laughs> hey, I gotta have a cool board game background, right? Or else I wouldn't be a board game boy. Anyway, that's uh, yeah, nothing else really this week. Honestly, Skull's pretty cheap. And also Skull, you can play just with coasters. So check that out. But you can make yourself your own copy and just have a bunch of bunch of fun, a bunch of laughs. Um, that's it. I gotta go, but I really appreciate you being here. Thanks again for the likes, subscribes, the shouts, the screams, the hoots, the hollers, and the hoot nanny. Uh, tell me what you're backing this week or what you're excited for upcoming. I always love hearing from you. Thanks again for watching. My name is Christopher Forge. Wow. That might be the first time. I mean, I I don't I don't have a catchphrase, but that might be the first time that I've I've actually gotten my own name wrong. Um, so there's that. I don't I don't even have a name anymore. I don't have a catchphrase, and I don't have a name. Uh, this is this is a rough life. <laughs>